Welcome back to Retro Axis. On this episode, I'm going to do a deeper dive into the Atari VCS BIOS and look a little bit deeper into the settings. Let's get started. So a few days ago, I unlocked the Atari VCS BIOS password by looking into the EFI firmware and finding that. If you haven't seen the video where I went through and recorded every single option, you're more than welcome to do that. It's a very long video of just me clicking around and looking at every single setting. And it's there just for you to explore, hit pause, look at the settings and decide what you wanna decide about the settings. What I'm gonna do in this video is actually look at a few of the options within the setup utility and talk about whether or not they provide any additional value for the VCS. So I'm gonna begin by screen capturing and let's dive in. So now that I've been able to get in, let me first show you how to remove the password uh, so you don't need it any longer. Uh, you start by going into the security tab and you set the supervisor password and you set it to nothing. Now here I've hit enter. I've already cleared my password, but when you do this, it will have you enter the original password. That's that piano 18 482 password and then uh, after you entered that two empty uh, form fields and now the password has been removed from the system now you do have to save and exit in order for that to, to take hold but uh, that is how you clear the password so regarding this bios here's what i've learned so far now there is a tremendous amount of advanced features and settings and things in here switches and knobs that i will probably never touch and I would imagine 90% of you probably will not either. Um, now, what I think I also understand is that this uh, BIOS also appears to have features uh, of the CPU uh, that can be tweaked that the Atari VCS mainboard does not actually support. So there's quite a bit of settings and things that probably don't even apply to this actual hardware, which is why I suspect the password was there in the first place to prevent us from making mistakes and potentially breaking the machine. In fact, it's interesting, there's certain settings that if you attempt to turn them on, you actually get a warning. So here's an example. Here, under the DDR setting, if you go under common options and you go to change the timing, you're presented with a warning that indicates you could potentially damage your processor and void your warranty. Choosing I accept, you can now see here, uh, this is the memory, the ability to actually overclock the memory is available if you go into this mode and set overclocking. Uh, earlier I had this set to auto, that was the default setting, but when you go to enable, you see where you can now begin to tweak the memory clock speed and make other adjustments uh, to the memory. Now again, these are very advanced options, uh, something that I'm not actually gonna do uh, because at this point I'm not trying to do this, I'm just demonstrating to you some of the capabilities and advanced features of this BIOS. Now, going back, a few of the things that were interesting to me, as you saw in a, in a previous episode, I enabled virtual machine support. And I had a couple of VMs that I was running using the QEMU or KVM hypervisor on a Linux machine. And if you look, I can show you where that is turned on. So if you go into uh, the chipset or CPU related settings here, you'll note SVM support. On an AMD chip, the virtualization support is called SVM. On Intel, it's called Intel VT and you would enable that differently on an Intel machine, but because this is AMD, it's SVM. You can also confirm that if you go into a Linux machine, and if you read the slash proc slash CPU info file, and you look at the CPU flags, you'll see SVM in the list of flags for the CPU. So a few other interesting uh, features in the BIOS, we can see here boot type, UEFI boot type, Note you can fall that back to legacy, which would uh, you know, potentially not use EF EFI and use a traditional uh, PC BIOS, so that can be turned on. Uh, quick Boot and Quiet Boot, these are both settings where uh, if you turn off Quick Boot, it will then go through POST, which is where it performs a memory health check and does a few other system checks. Quiet Boot actually prints that information out to the screen, so rather than just jumping you right to a a blank screen and then loading the OS, you'll actually see some information if you turn off quiet boot. Now, another thing that I think is really great that this has is Pixie boot capability. As you know, this does have an ethernet cord. Uh, and so you would have the ability to net boot 
this from a remote server, uh, which is really a nice feature. So another one of the things that I've been asked about quite frequently is adjustments to the graphics card or the GPU. I haven't found too many tweaks, but let me just show you what's available here in the bio. So firstly, video configuration. Um, there's not much really you can do here. This Raven 2, uh, there's no other change to this particular setting. You can disable HDMI audio. Uh, it's either enabled or disabled. Um, there's no other audio capabilities that I'm aware of for output, so that's probably not something you're gonna need to do. Uh, brightness control method, uh, you know, this is either video BIOS or VGA driver. I'm gonna leave it on the default, which was VGA driver. Um, so really, you know, that's it really for the, for the GPU and graphics settings. There's not a whole lot else there uh, that you can tweak. There's nowhere I can find a video RAM allocation. Um, so unfortunately, I think we're, I think that's all we can do with the video RAM. So another thing of interest is how to disable secure boot. So one of the things that was important was installing other operating systems like Laka or Batacera or any other distro or operating system that does not have support for UEFI secure boot. To do that, what we do is we go on to administer secure boot. Again, I've already turned off my password, but if you have not done that, you will need to enter a password here. Uh, and here you simply go in and you disable enforce secure boot. Um, there's other things you could certainly do. I'm not going to recommend you do any of these. Simply turning off enforcing it works perfectly fine. So there's no reason to do anything else but just disable it. Uh, and that was it. I didn't fool with any of these other settings. I just simply disabled it. And then I hit F10 to save and exit. And there it was and everything was working perfectly good. So to disable secure boot, super straightforward. So that's it for the exploration of the Atari VCS BIOS. I hope you learned something uh, from this video. I certainly had a lot of fun exploring and, and, and messing with this. It's been a, quite an adventure with this little box. Um, so again, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's still more to come. I still have a few more things I wanna test and experiment with on this particular device. Um, there's lots of really exciting things that the community's doing. So if you're not involved, uh, looking at Atari Age forums or on the Reddit forums, or if you haven't uh, happened to get onto the Discord uh, chat, highly suggest you do so. There's a lot of really great information, a lot of people doing some really neat stuff. Highly recommend you check that out. Uh, so again, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time on Retro Axis. Mm -hmm.